morning, y'all, uh, here at Lake Dardanelle. Uh, got a nice fog on the water this morning, uh, so we're going to stick around the boat ramp and throw crankbaits and jerkbaits to start off with. And then once the fog lifts, we might head up into Piney Bay, head out in the main river, something like that. So hopefully we can catch some fish. It's January 3rd, water temp should be still in the 40s, but it's about 55 degrees right now this morning, getting up into the high 60s this afternoon, so it should be a really good day to catch him. So let's get after it. Right here off the bat on this crankbait, good one too. Oh, fish. Yes! Look how fat that fish is. I just actually got another bite too. That fish is so fat. Crush that crankbait. Both hooks. Really nice one. Really nice one. 44 degree water. Just throwing that KVD 1.5 flat. Last time I was out here on Dardanelle, they bit this really well. I just wanted to start up by this riprap. I'm gonna try to throw a jerk bait around a lot today, but I start, start with this crank bait just because I know it works right now. But uh, that's a solid two and a half pounder. I'm gonna drop it in the live well and get pictures later. Awesome. So yeah, I'm right here at the mouth of Piney Bay. There's some uh, bridges that kind of lead into this creek. And uh, I'm just using the exact same pattern I was fishing a couple weeks ago when I was out here fishing on the lower end of Lake Dardanelle, just throwing this 1.5 flat. If y'all haven't seen that video, uh, check it out right here. Uh, it's just a really good video on how to catch fish in the winter on a crankbait. So uh, I'm gonna keep doing this for a while and then probably gonna try to switch it up, fish a jerkbait or something a little bit different so that uh, it's not the exact same video as last time. But uh, if I keep catching them on this, I might have to stick with it for a while. Okay, let's head up this creek and start throwing a jerkbait. Got him. Good one too. Really good one. On a jerk bait. Moved up into the narrows here. Got a really big one on. Wow. It's a freaking toad. I think he's got it pretty good. It's gotta be a six pounder. Gotta play him really really soft. I just pulled up on this rocky point, threw that jerkbait out there. It was probably sitting for six seconds and he grabbed it, but this is a monster of a fish. I need to play him really soft. He got in the top of the head. He got at least two hooks in him, which is good. Oh! Yes, look at that thing. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <sighs> that is a beast on that jerk bait. Golly. Oh, water temperature is 44 degrees. Fishing down, there's a bunch of bluffy banks in the narrows here at Dardanelle, and that's, that's gotta be a, I don't even know, I'm the way I'm, I'm bad at guessing big fish. Um, I don't catch, I catch a lot of them, but I still get freaked out and overestimate them, but let me get the scales, get this guy off, and then we'll talk about this spot. I'm shaking, guys. I am shaking. I think I see, I don't know what y'all see, but seven pounds, 14 ounces is what I saw. Freaking seven pounder. That's my biggest bass on Lake Dardanelle ever. I fished this lake a ton, caught tons of five and six pounders out here. Never caught a seven, that's awesome. I'll drop this guy in a live well, and then we'll get down to uh, how I caught him, but oh, man. Woo! 
Golly. So I uh, caught that fish. Uh, I'm actually not throwing a Strike King bait. Don't tell my sponsors, but uh, I'm out of this color in the uh, Strike King. But this is the uh, Lucky Craft Pointer 100. Uh, really good jerk bait. Really good cold water jerk bait. Um, the good thing about this area of the lake, though, is out where we started, where I caught that crankbait fish, the water clarity was like six inches. Now that we've come up this creek, the water temperature has risen a degree, and the water's a lot clearer, so they'll actually eat this jerk bait. And normally my rule of thumb for jerkbait fishing is you want 18 inches of visibility um, to be able to get those fish to actually see the bait. So, whew, heart's still beating there. So the spot I'm fishing right here is actually a steep point and it has a creek channel that hugs up right against it. And what this does is it creates a ledge in about five to six feet of water that drops straight off into the creek channel into 20 foot. And what these fish are doing is they're sitting right on top of that ledge and ambushing bait. They're moving through this creek channel and it's just a perfect ambush spot for these wintertime bass. So this right here, so what I'm trying to imitate today, got this little guy on my jerk bait, and uh, these, di these shattered dying because this water temperature is getting kind of cold, and you can just see him floating up on the surface everywhere in here. And uh, whenever you have those shad dying off in the winter, a jerk bait is your number one uh, bait. Right now, if you look at my graph too, it's just covered, just covered in bait down there. So. There's all kinds of stuff right here. It looks like a really good area right here. Just uh, not getting bit, so hopefully I'll get a bite here on this jerk bait. But uh, looks like we're fishing the right spot. Got him. Good one. Another really big one from that jerk bait. Golly, he's pulling. I was about to say, this after this cast, I was gonna get going. I moved back up into Piney Bay to uh, hit a couple of these fluffy banks. I don't know how big he is. Oh my God, it's another giant. Oh my God. It's another tank. Y'all see that fish? Don't come off fish, she's got both hooks, thank God. <laughs> oh, that's not a seven, but that's a freaking toad again. Same jerk bait, same pattern, just a point. A, a bluffy point, just letting that jerkbait sit for all five seconds, and he just grabbed it. God, it's, it's so awesome. Let me get this guy unhooked. We'll weigh him, and I'm gonna put him in the live well. And we gotta get another one. We're gonna get 30 pounds today, guys. Probably not. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's a six, 606. I don't know if y'all can see that. So got three keepers in the live well, a uh, 714, a 606, and then like a two and three quarters. So uh, not a bad bag so far. Need to put a couple more keepers in the boat. We're gonna have a good limit today. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, I've, this, is, this has been an awesome day. Uh, I'm not getting a lot of bites. I'm just getting a few quality bites on this jerk bait on these uh, bluffy points. Every fish has come off of a uh, really steep point. The boat's sitting in 24 foot of water right now, uh, casting right up to the bank and just working that jerk bait back. Um, the fish are actually up pretty shallow. I'd say they're probably about five to seven feet. Uh, they're just sitting around that break from the shallow to deep water. That jerk bait pulls over the top of their head. They come up and while it's suspending there, they grab it. But uh, oh, I've fished a lot of water too. I've, these, these fish aren't everywhere. Uh, I'm covering a lot of water, probably fished uh, 15, different little spots since I caught that big seven pounder, just hitting all the little bluffy channel points that I can find. 
Hey guys, I just wanted to quickly go through the gear I was using today. Uh, for most of the day, I was throwing this jerk bait, which is Lucky Craft Pointer, and it's in the Sartre Shad color. Uh, this is a really good color in stained water uh, because it has that nice matte finish, and it's got the Sartreuse on there, which is really good. Um, this is a suspending jerk bait, and I switched out the stock treble hooks. I do it with all my treble hook baits, but what that'll actually do is change the way the bait suspends depending on the weight of the hooks you use. So to get this bait to suspend perfectly, what I use is a uh, number six Gamakatsu EWG in the back, a number five Gamakatsu round bend in the front, and then on that front hook hanger, you can see I put an extra split ring, just a number or a size three split ring on the front there. That'll make sure that bait suspends perfectly, and it'll also suspend nose down, which is key uh, when getting those fish to bite that jerk bait. Um, and that's a good tr tip for any jerk bait. You can do that. If the bait's floating too much, just throw an extra split ring on that front hook hanger and you'll be all good. Uh, for my gear, I was throwing a seven foot medium light action bait casting rod, a really good tip on this rod for that jerk bait. Uh, and then I was using six three to one gear ratio bait casting reel and 12 pound monofilament line. Mono is really important for fishing a suspended jerk bait because mono floats and it won't weight that bait down too much and make it sink. So that's what I was using. There we go. It's not too bad right there, is it? Two just absolute studs. Throwing that uh, jerk bait, letting it suspend, and just catching big bass. So uh, next time you go fishing on your home lake, try a jerk bait, especially if the water's below 50 degrees. Look for those channel swing points, and you're going to catch some studs like this too. So hope you all enjoyed, and see you next time.